Hello and welcome to another video. In this episode I'm gonna review the Terminator Future Shock and the Terminator Skynet. Both games are first person shooter games for the PC DOS. Both games were developed by Bethesda Softworks and published either by Bethesda Softworks or Virgin Interactive depending on in which country the games were released in. The setting in both games is Los Angeles in the year 2015 of the Terminator universe, but the games are not based on any of the Terminator movies. They are also the last two out of five Terminator games which were made by Bethesda Softworks and released for PC-DOS. They made The Terminator, The Terminator 2029, The Terminator Rampage, The Terminator Future Shock and The Terminator Skynet. The Terminator Future Shock was released in the year 1995 and shortly after that Bethesda Softworks decided to create an add-on slash mission disc for it. But during the development of this add-on Bethesda changed their plans and decided to make a standalone game which became later on the Terminator Skynet and it was released in the year 1996. Both games are very similar and that is also the reason why I thought that I'm gonna review both games in one video, since everything that I'm gonna say about Terminator Future Shock will also count for the Terminator Skynet. But let's not jump ahead, first we're gonna start with the Terminator Future Shock. By now I guess everybody knows how Skynet became self-aware and started the war between the machines and the human race. Also Bethesda must have fought the same way because they made the shortest or maybe one of the shortest recap of a background story ever in a video game intro. In 1995 Los Angeles blows up and in 2015 Los Angeles is still on fire and machines are searching for remaining humans to either use them for experiments or as workers in the death camps or they terminate them. The end. Done. Anyways, in the Terminator Future Shock your character was able to flee from one of Skynet's death camps with the help of a member of the resistance. Sadly, during this escape the soldier gets mortally wounded and you have to leave him behind. But before he dies he tells you where the resistance headquarter is and how you can get there. Now you have to fight your way through the enemy lines to get to the resistance headquarter. After that you become a member of the resistance under John Connor and you're gonna participate in the war against the machines. At the beginning of the game you have to name your character and also choose a call sign. Before each mission a menu will appear with four options. Begin, Briefing, Tactical and Statistics. And on the bottom you see the objectives of the next mission. Now if you want you can jump right into the mission by choosing Begin. Or you check out the briefing first which would be a wise decision since number one the briefing tells you exactly what you have to do in the mission plus they are also helpful in terms of orientation and number two the storyline is told in the briefings. Tactical shows you all kinds of enemy units which you may encounter in this mission along with detailed information about them. The statistics are available after you've succeeded the first mission and they tell you your accuracy, how many enemies you've destroyed so far and so on.
The levels in the Terminator Future Shock are for the most part open world like and huge for a game for 1995. So there is a lot to explore, plus you are also able to enter every building in a level as long as you find a door. Exploring the levels is an advantage that you should not underestimate. On one hand you're gonna find a lot more ammunition, armor and healing items which are much needed and on the other hand you're gonna avoid a couple of ambushes if you don't use the main roads or the obvious ways. Inside the buildings and also in the outside areas there are a lot of objects that can be destroyed, like buses, trucks, cars or furnitures. But inside buildings those objects are for the most part hiding places either for helpful items or for enemies. In outside areas the objects can be used as booby traps if someone shoots at those. The explosions are pretty powerful and make a lot of damage either to you or the enemies, but the explosion radius is very short. So if you want to use them to your advantage, an enemy must be right next to the object in order to be affected by the explosion. And it's also the same thing when you destroy enemy units, each one will blow up in a smaller or bigger explosion depending on the unit itself. One thing that I don't know if the programmers forgot to implement or if it was made on purpose is that fire doesn't hurt your character. And even though some might say it is a flaw since it is not realistic, I personally don't mind it because especially in buildings there are always some fires burning and therefore you would take a lot of extra damage in the buildings. But don't worry, the enemies are skillful damage dealers and they easily make up for every damages that you would have taken from those fires. On the bottom of the screen is the for old first person shooter games typical status bar with all kinds of indicators. Starting on the left side there's an indicator for radiation which tells you the current radiation level. Save stands for no radiation slash a minimal radiation level in the normal range. Caution stands for radiation level above the normal range which is life threatening and you're gonna start losing health and armor slowly. Danger stands for a high radiation level, very deadly, in areas with this radiation level your character will lose health and armor pretty quickly, which means death in a couple of seconds. Beside the indicator the screen will also start flashing red and you're also gonna hear the noise of a Geiger counter as soon as you enter an area with higher radiation levels. Right next to the radiation indicator we have a compass, then below we see which primary and secondary weapons we are currently using, plus how much ammunition we have for those weapons. Next are the status bars for armor and health, and on the right side is a communication window which shows any messages that your character either receives or sends to the headquarter. By pressing the tab key on the keyboard you bring up the auto map, the map is in 3D, it shows your location, your heading and you can rotate it and zoom in and out as you please. In the Terminator Future Shock there are a total of 12 primary and 5 secondary weapons available. As primary weapons you will get a lead pipe, a submachine gun, an M16 assault rifle, a heavy 30 caliber machine gun, a shotgun, a grenade launcher, a rocket launcher, a laser rifle, a laser gun, a phased plasma pistol, a plasma rifle and a phased plasma gun. Secondary weapons are Molotov cocktails, pipe bombs, grenades, canister bombs and satchel charges. But not only the weapons arsenal shows some variety, also there are over 15 different enemy types that you will encounter in this game. Some of them we already know from the movies like the T600s, the T800s, the flying HK dragons and the giant battle tanks eradicators which are called Goliaths in this game. The rest are creations from Bethesda Softworks which fit perfectly into Skynet's arsenal since all of those units are made for different terrains and specific duties. There are scout units, infiltration units, hunter units, guarding units and of course combat units.
Typical for an older first person shooter, all the enemy units are stationary and they will only start moving around slash attacking you if you get in their sight. But the sight radius is slightly smaller than the draw distance that you have in the game, so it is possible to attack enemy units before they actually notice you. Of course as soon as you start shooting at them, they will come after you. But you still have the advantage that you attack from a safe distance because their attack range is even shorter than their side range, with the exception of gun turrets, since they can't move around, their attack range is the same as their side range. But you will only have this advantage for the most part only in outside areas, since you won't find a lot of huge rooms, halls or very long corridors in indoor areas. Most of the 17 levels you will have to master by foot, but there are also some driving levels in a jeep and some flying levels in a modified HK Dragon, which also adds some variety to the game and what I also like about those levels is the fact that you are actually controlling those vehicles. This is something that you don't find a lot in modern first person shooter games anymore, at least in single player games. But anyways, in those levels you don't have to worry about ammunition at all, since you are armed with a rechargeable plasma cannon or laser cannon and a rocket launcher with 50 rockets. But the downside is you don't get any items in those levels and you can't exit your vehicle. So you have to make it through the level without any armor or healing items, which can be pretty tough, especially in the cheap levels. But at least you always start the level with full armor and health. At any time during the game, you can save the game, change the difficulty level to either easy, medium or hard, then you are also able to change the graphic detail level, the audio volume for music and sound effects and the controls. You can either play the game with joystick and keyboard or mouse and keyboard. Plus, if you don't like the original controls, you can redefine all the keys yourself to your liking. And the Terminator Future Shock is known to be the first first person shooter game that introduced the keyboard and mouse controls that have become a standard in today's days. Where you can look slash aim in any directions with the mouse, not just only left and right, and the rest you control with the keyboard. The funny thing is that journalists from back in the days from video game magazines who playtested the game didn't like those new kinds of controls and they mentioned in their articles that the controls feel awkward and they are hard to get used to. I wonder if their opinions have changed over the last 20 years, because if not, the video game industry would have provided us with more or less awesome first person shooter games with awkward and hard to get used to controls for over two decades now. Joking aside, the controls are perfect in my opinion, the music is good, it's not epic or dominating, but yeah, it's just used to underline slash support the atmosphere, which it does very well. The sound effects are also pretty good, I also like the atmosphere in the game, and for 1995 the graphics were really impressive, especially since it was one of the first games to feature true 3D polygon enemies. The game uses a graphic engine called X-Engine with a resolution of 320 by 200. It was made by Bethesda Softworks and it was also used in some other games including the Terminator Skynet and three of the Elder Scrolls games. And still today I think it's a pretty good looking game. The storyline in the Terminator Future Shock is one of those key elements that makes this game special for me personally and maybe also for a lot of other gamers worldwide. Now we already know the time and the setting, Los Angeles in the year 2015. So the game takes place 14 years before Kyle Reese follows the Terminator into the past to protect Sarah Connor. But Bethesda Softworks didn't just make a prequel storyline that will lead to the events of the first Terminator movie, instead they created a different storyline with similar events from the original story. So for example, because of our efforts in one of the first missions, a 13 year old Kyle Reese is able to flee from a death camp and join the resistance. Later on we hear about the first appearance of a T-800 infiltration unit and how effective and dangerous those units actually are. Even though the storyline is only told in texts with additional animated pictures of the talking characters, it still is well told and can give you some goosebumps.
Of course also time traveling plays a major role in this game, but this is the point where Bethesda went a different direction and breaks with the rules of the movies, because about halfway into the game strange things start to occur and not only to you but also to other resistance units, since during the missions enemy units will pop up out of nowhere right next to you and start attacking you immediately, for reasons unknown at least at that time. Later on it turns out that Skynet was able to create a time machine, which it uses to send units back in time to change the outcomes of lost battles which had a strategic importance. So it's not like in the movies where only organic life forms and machines covered with living tissues can be sent through time, Skynet sends everything it got at you, even Goliath battle tanks. And even though I personally don't like it when someone changes a major detail from an original story, I didn't mind it in this case because I thought it was an interesting and clever idea. But it all depends on the execution, if such an idea works or not. And this brings me to the drawbacks, since for me this is the biggest drawback in the game. The first couple of times those time travels happen, it actually works. You're unprepared. It's surprising and challenging, but the further you progress in the game, the more often it happens until to a point where it feels like it happens almost every two steps. And it also happens in the driving and flying levels. And from there on it starts to become frustrating, unbelievable and you get the feeling it's, yeah, it's just a cheap trick from the programmers to make the game harder to beat. Now it might be a little late, but I wanted to apologize for spoiling the time traveling enemies, but I had to include this into my review because it is the biggest drawback in the game, at least for me, and if I didn't mention it, it wouldn't be an honest review. The rest of the drawbacks are not that big of a deal, but I also gonna mention them as well. First, the character picks up everything, no matter if you already reached the maximum limit of health, armor or ammunition or not. This can become a big problem, especially in the later levels if you're not careful and keep track of your equipment and status. Next, the auto map is actually useless, for three reasons. Number one, it doesn't show you any headings or positions which are or can be useful for your current mission. Number two, it doesn't show you any positions of enemy units even if they stand right next to you. And number three, the section that the map shows you is too small to actually use it for orientation. So in my opinion, if you lost in a level, your chances are higher asking a terminator for the right directions than by using the auto map. The next thing which I don't like that much, even though it's kind of realistic, is the fact that during the missions there's no menu or anything that tells you what you have to do in the mission, slash showing you your mission objectives. Only if you destroyed an important mission related target or reached a specific checkpoint you get a message from headquarters telling you your next objective or heading to progress in the mission. The only way to read the briefings again is by killing your character and restarting the mission again. Plus, besides switches, sometimes you have to interact with computer terminals or other objects which aren't obvious at first or you don't notice them at all and you're gonna walk right by them. So it is easy to get lost or stuck in the huge levels. But if something like that frustrates you, feel free to take it out on the moon. It can handle it. Or maybe not. The Terminator Future Shock is also known for one major problem, game crashes. And yes, the game crashed also on me, but it only happened twice during my playthrough. So I don't count that as a drawback or a real problem because I've played and enjoyed many other games which crashed a lot more often than that. Also I've read online that there is a patch that should fix this issue, so I'm actually not complaining about that. And that's actually all about the drawbacks, but there are two things left that I wanted to mention. Number one, the draw distance is quite short in this game, which is the most noticeable in the flying levels, it's a little bit better in the driving levels and in the walking levels, yeah it is still noticeable, but not that big of a deal. And number two, 
as it looks like Bethesda Softworks included some kind of ricochet effect into the game. Since you're gonna hurt your character if you shoot at the floor or a wall right in front of you with projectile weapons like the machine guns or the shotgun. So be careful if you're attacking an enemy from a higher ground like a rooftop or a balustrade. In summary, I can only say the Terminator Future Shock is a game with great graphics, good music and sound effects, excellent controls, an interesting, well-told storyline, and all of that combined creates a beautiful, almost perfect atmosphere. This is Garion79, and if you're watching this, you are the resistance. As it looks like the Terminator Skynet takes place around the same time as the Terminator Future Shock. Now I can't tell it for sure since there is no background story or any other helpful information in that regard available, not on the box, in the manual or in the game. But I came to the conclusion since all main characters from the briefings in the Terminator Future Shock are also in the briefings of the Terminator Skynet. It is definitely not a sequel, because everybody who played through the Terminator Future Shock knows the ending was conclusively. It is also not a prequel, since Kyle Reese is already a member of the Resistance. With some fantasy, yeah, we can say that this game is just a different campaign of another soldier that happened during the events of the Future Shock campaign. But the more obvious explanation is that since the Terminator Skynet is a standalone game, Therefore, none of the events of the Terminator Future Shock ever happened. The storyline of the Terminator Skynet is that Skynet found a still operating nuclear missile, which it tries to transport to a missile silo with a working launch pad, and fire it at Los Angeles to wipe out the entire resistance of that area, including John Connor and Kyle Reese. Your task is to foil Skynet's plans and taking care of this nuclear threat once and for all. The campaign consists out of 8 missions. Again, most of them you have to master by foot, but there are also some driving and flying levels. The levels are more compact, so they are not as big as in the Terminator Future Show. And some of the missions happen during dawn, the rest during night, like in Future Show. Bethesda Softworks also included an extra tutorial level that you can play before you start the campaign to learn the controls of the game. There are no new enemy types or new weapons available in the Terminator Skynet, but the machine guns don't have that ricochet effect anymore and the rocket launcher has a permanent lock-on function, so it uses some kind of homing missiles, which is helpful on one hand, but on the other hand, the rockets have a totally weird flying pattern for some kind of reason. The briefings are not animated anymore, instead they are videos with live actors. And I'll give them that they used actors who actually look like the animated characters from the Terminator Future Shock. Connor out. Bad news people. A convoy made it to the silo and the Terminators are prepping the Hades for launch. It's my fault sir. That convoy should have never gotten through. Let's deal with the present situation. At least you got back here alive with the missile data. Hand over any progress. I've only had the data 15 minutes, Connor. Nothing yet. Time is a lost luxury, Doctor. We're facing a nuclear strike within the hour. Then there's no time to formulate a plan to disable the missile. Our best chance is to get to the silo and override the target coordinates. You mean give the missile a different target? Exactly. If someone can reach the launch controls, they can insert a harmless target zone, perhaps someplace in the Pacific. All right, Bill, but we've got to move now. Volunteers! I'll go. I owe Skynet big payback. I'll do respect, Major. This is my job. Sir, give me the HK and I can reach the silo in a half hour. Sorry, Major. I need you here. This is our only shot. Get in the air, soldier. Hanover will radio the target codes to you when you get there. Yes, sir. According to your coordinates, the silo is in the desert to the east. Good luck. 
Beside the briefings there are also some short animated cutscenes which you will see after about every second mission. Bethesda Softworks also included a network and online multiplayer for the Terminate Skynet. Sadly I couldn't get it to work so I can't show you anything about that but I can give you some information about it. In this multiplayer up to 8 players are able to play against each other. The only mode available is deathmatch but there are a lot of options to customize the matches. You can play either as a terminator including the red vision with a lot of extra information like in the movie or as a resistance soldier. Each of them should have advantages and disadvantages like for instance the terminator should be slower and make mechanic walking noises which would make it hard to sneak up on other players and the soldiers are not able to use heavy weaponry like the rocket launcher for instance. But from what I've heard not all the advantages and disadvantages were actually implemented. Jeeps and HK Dragons could also be placed all over the map and you can use them at any time. And according to the internet this was the very first game that included vehicles for the multiplayer. The Terminator Skynet also uses the X-Engine graphics engine, but it's an improved version that allows you to play the game with a higher resolution of 640 by 480 Even though with the higher resolution the graphic looks yeah, sharper slash better, I still prefer the lower resolution of 320 by 200 more, but yeah, this is just my opinion. For everybody who likes higher resolution graphics better, the Terminator Skynet has a very cool feature in the main menu called Future Shock, which allows you to play the Terminator Future Shock also in 640x480. But in order to use that feature, you must own a copy of the Terminator Future Shock and it must be already installed on your hard disk. This is something that I really wanted to point out because in almost every other review it says that the Terminator Future Shock is already on the disk of the Terminator Skynet, which is not true, even the manual says you must own a copy of Future Shock to play it with enhanced graphics. And one other thing, you can't load any save games from the Terminator Future Shock if you're playing it through the Terminator Skynet, since you're using the save games folder of the Terminator Skynet. And those are basically all the differences between the Terminator Skynet and the Terminator Future Shock. The things that aren't that great in the Terminator Skynet are it runs far more unstable than Future Shock and the beginning plus the ending of the storyline are too weak in my opinion. About the game crashes, I don't know it exactly anymore but during my playthrough it crashed about 6 times, which is actually a lot considering the campaign is only half as long as the one in the Terminator Future Shock. And about the weak beginning and ending, the storyline itself is not mind blowing but it's ok in the Terminator Skynet. What I don't like about the beginning is, there is no background story or introduction of your character whatsoever. Now I don't need another recap of how the war started against the machines or a complete resume of the character, but at least a short explanation why you are here would have been nice. Like you have been transferred from another company, division, sector, whatever, or yeah you have been freed from a death camp like in the Terminator Future Shock. Instead you are literally just the new guy, no questions asked. Sir, has this individual been cleared by security? Yeah. Bots are starting to look more and more like us every day. Hey, couldn't he be one of the prototypes for a new model or something? Relax, Kyle. Our new soldier here checks out. I even had him run past one of the new canine units. I decided to assign him as a field op to the command team. Major Catherine Parker. Good to have you aboard. This is Dr. Hanover, our chief technician. You could call me Bill. And our young skeptic here is Kyle Reese. We think. Yeah, well, you can't be too careful around here. Anyways, welcome aboard. Now that we're all introduced, are you ready for some action? 
Yes, sir. Good. Parker, give him the details on one of those recon missions. With the ending it's almost the same, now I don't wanna spoil it, but yeah, you are able to cross Skynet's plans. You get a short animated cutscene which shows you what happens to the nuclear missile, then a cut to an HK Dragon searching the burning ruins of LA for humans and the end. To be fair it is an ending and it's better than in other games, where you just get a small text like, yeah, congratulations, you saved the day, or the end, thanks for playing. But I've expected a little bit more from Bethesda Softworks. It doesn't feel like your efforts made a change or had an impact. Instead it's more like just another day at the office. Overall also the Terminator Skynet is a great game in my opinion, plus beside the single player campaign you also get a multiplayer and the ability to play the Terminator Future Shock with enhanced graphics. But even though you can visit the Technoir Club from the first Terminator movie in one of the missions, the Terminator Future Shock is still the best Terminator game that I've played so far. The final question is, would I recommend those games, yes or no? And yeah, the answer is definitely yes. Both the Terminator Future Shock and the Terminator Skynet are great games for any first person shooter fan, for video gamers who like the Terminator franchise or the Terminator movies, and of course also for video game collectors. And even though I like the Terminator Future Shock a little bit more, mostly because of the storyline, also the Terminator Skynet is a great game and everybody who likes any kind of first person shooter game can't go wrong with any of those titles. Okay, but now we're at the end of my review of the Terminator Future Shock and the Terminator Skynet, the last two out of five Terminator games which were made by Bethesda Softworks for the PC DOS. I hope you enjoyed the show, maybe see you next time, take care, bye, and hasta la vista, baby. Hold your locks, we got three on the road. Three on the road. Hold back. Roger Mark, leader. Connor here, we're sending help. Man down, sector three.